producer mm-hmm. behind the scenes making the things happen. So he those makes are, all sorts of things happen. Yeah. He's like our magic genie. Yeah, so going on into game number three, we do have a tied match one to one. We want to win clan versus Crossfire Gaming. In game number right. three, we have some bios. That's that is correct. So we want to win is putting out Marcus to play. His full name is Merrick Machalek. Machalek, if I butcher that again, I apologize. Uh, he's a 23 year old and he's also Czech. He plays Terran and he was promoted from the B team to their A team in late 2013. He's known for his mech style with accompanying nukes. Ooh, we do not see that very often. Not often at all. So Crossfire Gaming is going to be sending out Hugh Shang. Hugh Shang is a Canadian Protoss player. He's played RTSs his whole life, but only SC at the release of Wings of Liberty. Uh, he has taken second place at Baseland 25 and first place at Baseland number 26. So not... A uh, not inexperienced with the winner's circle. Absolutely, and uh, looking forward to see what these players bring to the table for us this evening. Anyone's always enticed whenever we hear the prospect of nukes, as it's something we don't see very often. Jumping on into King Sejong, Sejong Station Ellie in the lower right-hand corner, sporting the red colors and representing Crossfire Gaming. It is Hu Shang. And in the top left-hand corner of this map, representing Terran, and we want to win, it is Marcus. You know, I thought for a minute there that uh, DJ Wheat may have trademarked the name Marcus, but that would not be uh, not be good for all the Marcuses out there, but I do have to say that every time I hear that name, that is always who I'm thinking of for some reason. <laughs> I saw there was a funny video of him a few weeks ago where he was playing... Uh, what is it, Dead Souls 2? Yeah. <laughs> um, with his son there. Um, pretty That's... funny. That That is a brave endeavor, as I would get incredibly frustrated incredibly quickly. I don't know what that game is at all, but I'll take your word for it. Yeah, that's a, it's one of those games that's stupid hard. Oh, I, I'm not a huge... I don't get along very well with the puzzle games, which make, uh, may surprise you, considering that SC2 is sort of, in some sense, is a puzzle game. It's just a <laughs> very varying puzzle game, but stuff like Half-Life and whatnot, I did not like at all, because I'll get uh, into a, what would be a fairly simple puzzle for a lot of people and just be like, I, I give up. I, I quit. <laughs> uh, Burgundy in chat is correcting me. It's Dark Souls, not Dead Souls. Yeah, that's... Sorry. <laughs> Yes, I do mean Dark Souls. I apologize. So Marcus Mark. moving out of his base of the SCV here in a fairly intelligent way, scouting out all of the uh, all of the dark areas around his natural there just to make sure there's nothing super sneaky from Hu Sheng. Hu Sheng's going to be moving up the ramp here and thought maybe the SCV would be jetting over to build a supply depot, but he does not, so he's going to get in here and get a scout off. Reaper is on the way as well as an orbital command. So fairly normal Terran play so far, but that probe is locked into the base, so he is mm-hmm. going to be around for a while. <laughs> He's going to be trying to do whatever damage he can before uh, he finally sings the sweet goodnight. A uh, SCV is pulled off to try and deal with the annoyance, though, and uh, that does cost Marcus some mining time as well. And uh, he's coming out with a zealot right away, which is a little bit, uh, a little bit, I would think, smart in this case because this probe is in uh, Marcus's base, so that is going to take the Reaper, you know, a good 10, 15, 20 seconds to deal with that probe. So that's an extra 10, 15, 20 seconds he has that he does not have to uh, have that in his base. But it looks like Hu Shang was going to go down to put down an expansion, but uh, not going to happen as a uh, <laughs> engineering bay going down at his natural. That's very frustrating to deal with as well, but Zealot is on the field. Mothership Core is about to pop out as well. That's right. Uh, it looks like Marcus did fly his barracks back quite a ways to put that down that reactor of factory coming up right behind it. Zealot is going to be whacking away at that engineering bay for quite a while. The Reaper is coming in. Will be able to kill this Zealot if it does let it, uh, but the Mothership Core is going to be coming down. And that extra 20 seconds he got by having that probe in his base did uh, give plenty of time for the Mothership Core to come out, so the Reaper's not really going to be uh, very big of a threat here, but this Engineering Bay really throws off a build if you have a time that you want to get an expansion down, while Marcus is doing that very same thing himself. It seems like uh, Hu Shang is not uh, unfamiliar with that type of trickery, though, as he did not let his minerals get too high, just uh, continued on with the build, getting more probes. 
and continuing to spend that money so he's not just getting a huge bank. Yes, this is definitely something here that I uh, meant to mention. There is a little sneak spot in the back here that definitely by the angle of the map is hard to see from this side, but it's like, uh, I forget what the name of that other map is. It has a little, uh, almost like a stepladder for the Reapers on the back side of the double high wall base. So that is definitely a spot you have to pay attention to, but it looks like Hushang has it covered as he has two Stalkers and a Militia Core there. One more, maybe two hits on that Reaper, and he would have been able to get it, but bunker down at the front from Marcus as his command center finishes up. Four Marines there to block off that very, very, very large ramp. Yes, it is very large. Forge now going down for Hushang. Uh, so defenses and uh, good old upgrades going to be coming down from that. Uh, Robo coming out for Hushang as well. And most often the case we've seen Robo lately, the first thing to come out of it against uh, Terran at least has been the Warp Prism. Mm -hmm. And we've seen some pretty interesting play with that, uh, going with the sentries and stalkers over, carrying them over and then doing a quick warp in, but it looks like that is not going to be the case. He wants to get that observer out as Banshees are definitely something that is a reoccurring nightmare for some of these Protosses that don't get the detection up early but that reaper does get himself locked into a bit of a corner there against that forge but what he does see is the fact that that forge is busily spinning away so he's going to know that upgrades are incoming for hushing marcus now doing one of my favorite little tricks uh the very quick um drop with a mine and a couple of marines it looks like there were two more marines that he could have picked up uh they were finishing right at the same time but he decided to leave those behind uh, so they will just be kind of hanging out there at the front. Observer now going into the natural base and towards the front line here for Marcus. Well, this observer is going to come oh so close-ish to that uh, medevac sneaky around the back. He is going to have quite a wide open entry here. He could even get into the back here without even being seen almost. There is vision to the back, but his units are quite a ways away, so there is no amount of amazing reaction time that's going to help here. But does he get the probes out before the mine goes down? And it. Oh, oh. nice hit there. He did yeah. kill a total of four probes, but uh, the mine was still able to get burrowed before Photon Overcharge came down. But still a fairly quick reaction uh, in getting those probes out and actually even splitting them two different ways. So. Uh, Great play here by Marcus, though, now taking those remaining four Marines and going to the natural while the army's back trying to deal with that mine. They do get pulled uh, for the Photon Overcharge to be able to deal with that mine, and sure enough, it does go off before another mine is launched, but the Mudivac is getting away with full cargo. So now tanks can be coming out for Marcus. He's doing a good job of keeping Hushang busy while getting himself pretty well defended here. He has one tank on the low ground, one on the high, with uh, bunkers smattered throughout, so he's going to be pretty well defended against much that Hushang can pull across and this is a pretty smart play especially considering that he saw those upgrades coming down so uh, pretty unlikely that the air threat would be there but as that medevac is going to be coming into the back of the base here cannon is finishing so he's going to have to get unloaded and is going to have to pull those marines out of there pretty quickly if he wants to keep them. Oh the cannon now targeting the medevac and that does go down so these marines are dead in the water. He did not see these extra additional gateways going down here with that drop though, so he's going to have an extra six gateways coming down with Templar Archives as well. It will be researching Storm out of that shortly. This is a pretty awesome play here by uh, by Hushang, and I like it a lot. Yeah, he did have his uh, Zealot legs finished too there, so he's going to have those speedy Zealots <clears throat> to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Marines. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be pretty uh, pretty awesome here for Hushang if he keeps it going. One of my favorite builds. Uh, probably one of my favorite builds of all time. Pretty much just sort of rushing for High Templar with Storm uh, because the Terran will have the bio units for that one big push. And if you can get them out early enough and can have like one to two Templar with a storm or two for that first push from Terran, you can pretty much squash it and then just swing back. Marcus being very disciplined here with his, uh, his Marines kind of sending them all over the map to try and get some vision. Uh, it looks like he misclicked on the one on the right. He was trying to take that tower, but it did not quite get to the high ground. Uh, but he even has a Marine kind of in the back uh, on the low ground near his main base just to scout for any incoming air from that side. So he uh, is quite well protected. Uh, great positioning just all around of his air units uh, around the perimeter. He is just uh, on lockdown here. Marcus, Marcus's Marine did have a clutch uh, spot of this uh, Warp Prism headed out. 
and he's going to get a few shots and see the expansion going down as well. But the main point is he did see that warp prism, so he knows that's headed on the field. Uh, drilling claws coming down as well for those mines. That has been a pretty scary, uh, pretty scary thing for Protoss we've seen lately. Is when you get a lot of mines with those drilling claws, you can just kind of walk them right in. In some cases, if there's not detection, but observers on the field for Hushang, so should be relatively safe. But uh, what's the reaction going to be for Marcus on this? Well, he does have a Viking, and he has a Raven here on the left side. The question is whether or not he's expecting that coming. He does have a couple of Marines there, too. It looks like they are running, though. Uh, but it looks like Hu Shang kind of delayed there, kind of forgot about it for a moment, uh, doing some other things. So, uh, yeah, these air units are a little bit out of position. They aren't going to be able to head that off, but they are going to be there fairly quickly uh, to be able to deal with it. Now the Zealots are dropping. They've released the full payload, and all the SCVs are running. Not a lot this Viking, and... Uh... Uh, Raven can do about these zealots on the ground. They are getting quite a few SCV kills now taking out that tower to open up the future possibility of more drops such as that. But with that charge, they do get quite a few kills here. Looking at the total count, looks like uh, 9 to 11, 12, 13 total. Wow, a lot of kills. Very good drop from Hushan yeah, there. Incredibly successful. Tons and tons of kills. So that will definitely swing uh, in the favor of Hushing eventually now, especially with that third base coming up, going with that Templar tech. As soon as he gets some probes into gas here, that gas income will be coming up. It looks like a mine drop at the natural expansion does swing the probe kill count the other direction, getting about 10 additional kills with those four mines right there. So it looks like uh, the worker's killed count is uh, 26 uh, against Marcus and 16 uh, for Hushang, so... Although looking at the uh, unit uh, count down here in the bottom section, oh, all the mines are active! <laughs> oh no! Huge mine hit on the entire oh. army of Hushang, killing a good number of those zealots and a good number of the stalkers. I just sort of facepalm myself there as I was saying that a little bit. He, uh, you could tell he had the intention of killing those with that photon overcharge, but uh, uh, what would be it? Uh, hashtag inconvenient cooldown. <laughs> <laughs> So now that worker's kill count will spike up to 33 for Marcus, but another uh, Hushang drop is coming in, and there is a third command center there. Is it going to try and take that out? He's kind of taking his sweet time, and that army does see it. Seeing the number of uh, zealots that Hushang had, Marcus did go for a decent number of Hellions here. He does have, oh no, the feared, the awful Hellbat drop. Uh, coming in the left side, but there is a cannon there, so that will help defend against this. But if he has good reaction time, but the medevac does boost in, the hellbats Ooh, end up feedback. targeting the cannon instead of the probes. So not a whole lot of probe kills there, but nice feedback, as you said. Yeah, but Hellions are now racing their way across the map. They're going to try and sneak in and get some more kills, and sure enough, they are getting right behind those probes, but again, targeting the cannons. Uh, now being readjusted to target the probes, but not as many kills as he would have hoped as zealots do get warped in to clean that up. Yeah, so this has been and a pretty good drop. Yeah, this has been a pretty cool game so far. Yeah, another uh, two mines in the main base, so huge, huge worker killed. Yeah, 47, 47 now for Marcus. Uh, but ironically, the worker count is still fairly even at 61 to 58 in favor only slightly by Marcus. But uh, now the big the big thing to note here is that uh, ghosts are on the field, Galligation, uh, from Marcus coming out. Uh, we have not had a nuke researched yet, I do not believe. No, we haven't. Uh, so that is a possibility, but, I mean, ghosts pretty much necessary with the High Templar. But the big thing coming out from Hushang here is the Colossus oh. range. Huge Templar drop and Storm's doing tons of damage. There are some units there, but they are just able to walk right on out. Uh, yeah. The, it looks uh, like the Hellions, or Hellbats, <laughs> rather, are trying to chase them down, and they are stealthily making their way out of there. The uh, the longevity of these High Templar are quickly uh, starting to be less useful as Marcus continues to go more and more towards the mech path. Uh, feedback's still pretty useful, but a batch of Marines coming here looks like they just wanted to free up some supply as he was getting capped there and wants to continue down that path the mech more ghosts coming out more hellbats and uh, banshees as well yeah he's getting that cloaking field too so a little bit late for those but uh you know when you do a hard switch into banshees like that they can be uh a lot of times not be expected and 
that can do very well for you. Pretty good setup here at the front for Marcus. A lot of tanks, a lot of Hellbats, and uh, a little smattering here of Thors. Look like another command center being put down front, but uh, Hushang's starting to get uh, the wind in him that he needs to move out, and this is smart because as time goes on, Marcus is definitely scaling up here very quickly. Uh, upgrades hugely in favor of Hushang right now. Two to two in favor of only plus one for Marcus. So this push with the Colossus and the Immortals and High Templar is going to be fairly strong here. There is a mine at the top. Tank starting to take shots at those Ooh. Zealots. Storm goes down on that mine, but doesn't quite take it out. Not quite, but Marcus has a good idea of what's happening, moving his army forward, but those tanks are not sieged and going down now. Huge storms, and Marcus is just walking right into it, so they are getting some damage done despite not being uh, the most effective against Mech. Yeah, and he really needed to get one of those storms down a little bit sooner and when those Hellbats were all tightly packed in there, but deciding he does not want to take that fight, pretty smart as he has a, quite a lot of value here in this army with all those High Templar and the Colossus. Definitely do not want to lose that right now as those Colossus are going to become more and more valuable along with the Immortals. Smart play here going Stargate Fleet Beacon and getting the Tempest out, especially considering the heavy-duty, uh, largely immobile army of Marcus, which is starting to lumber its way across the map but these colossus are going to run into this group of tanks here walking right on through it oh my god oh no big storm going down but marcus does not walk into it that time actually a fairly decent reaction there from hushang pulling back before losing either of those colossus but one is dangerously low vikings coming out to try and pick it off potentially but uh, you know, we've seen this quite a few times before in the Yumicon series when we were doing that this uh, terran mech army once it gets to this point it is so hard to deal with yeah, it really is. And Hushing just continues to expand here. More storms going down on those Hellbats, and they're just kind of derping along in there. So this army, while very substantial, is also very heavily wounded. Uh, and the right positioning here for Hushing, I mean, it's going to take some great positioning, but... Oh, this is just brilliant. Marcus is doing a great setup here where he's trying to... He's effectively able to engage either one of these bases. Hushing getting pretty greedy on his fifth base. And uh, Marcus now going after these rocks. So in order to defend, Hushang is going to have to split his army up. Uh, the Tempests are moving in now, though, and they're going to be targeting those tanks. Thors are trying to get over, and uh, it looks like Point Defense Drone's oh, down. No, that no Point Defense that. Drone. Oh, so Point Defense Drone so Single epically handed. clutch <laughs> against all of the Tempests. Uh, yeah. Since the Tempests fire so slow, easily to easily to handle the shots from at least four to five times nice time warp goes down locking down all of those hellbats more tempest join the fight this is a huge number of tempest yeah it really is and point defense drones are a little bit far away there he's trying to target that that uh thor and it's just not happening as uh, the point defense drones say no thank you those are my buddies i want those but more reinforcements are coming in for hu sheng not before big damage being done to this base however and uh, Tempest now moving forward once again. Points defense drones are gone, and so are the Ravens. Yeah, these tanks well. are soon to follow as well. I mean, plus three uh, attack is coming down for the mech army of Marcus, finishing just as these tanks die. Uh, so there's going to be a large resupply for both of these armies. As I mean, two plus two for the ground, and plus one shields, plus one air attack for Hushang. And these Tempests are going to be quite a force for Marcus to deal with. What do you think he should do to react? Oh man, uh, you know, it, it's hard to tell, but he does have that, uh, he does have a ghost there continuing to do some damage. The Tempests are standing right on top of it. I mean, one, anytime you kind of go like solely one type of unit, uh, you can kind of hard counter it if you get the right units. Um, Tempests are just pretty hard to deal with in general because of that range though. Interestingly enough, um, probably about six to eight months ago, I was watching Grubby's stream and uh, Grubby contended that a Tempest High Templar army was nearly unbeatable. Hmm. Especially hey. against Terran. So we will see if that holds true, as it looks like that's pretty much exactly what he's going for. Only Tempest, only High Templar. Tempest able to do the damage at long range. Looks like a cannon coming down just as this Planetary Fortress is finishing up. Looks like it's going to be within range of that PF, but Tempest is going to be able to quickly take that out with their bonus damage towards buildings. In the meantime, Marcus is trying to move forward aggressively with Widow Mines, taking on a couple of Stalkers. Did start with six, now down to two as the Tempests are moving in to deal with this planetary fortress. Yeah, and Hushang's still pumping out three Tempests at a time, and this is 
uh, quickly swing in favor of Hushing, but I mean, Marcus still kind of expanding at will here, now taking the expansion out in front of his bases as the one towards the top was a little bit vulnerable and unable to hold it. But these Tempests, I mean, he just doesn't have anything that's going to be really awesome at stopping them. He is growing his Viking count here really quick, and uh, Vikings along with point defense drones probably is going to be his best bet here, especially if he can get these mines up underneath, but we'll see if he can do that. But no, the Ravens! Uh, it looks like Marcus is going to try his hand at gambling as he is researching a nuke, and uh, if he gets the right shot off on these Tempests, that could heavily <laughs> oh shift the uh, scales in terms of power here. That would be insane. I mean, I mean, Hushing is very smart to go after those Ravens, as that's definitely the one thing that can shut down these Tempests, as we've seen. And oh, feedback would be pretty epic on there as well. Get that feedback on the huge Raven. Nope. Storms taking out so many of those mines. A couple do go off, and that. Oh, the Whoa. Wow. Hunter Seeker missiles do do quite a bit of damage to those bunched up Tempest. These Vikings now getting stormed to absolute oblivion. Going to end up not being quite enough. There was a ghost there that was trying to launch a nuke but did get stormed to death. There are three zealots in the uh, natural base of Marcus here, but not really. They, I mean, they're getting a decent amount done there. Another big zealot warp in here with the zealots marching on up to the natural expansion of Marcus. This is going to be a lot for him to deal with because he still does have all these tempests out here. And uh, tempests being produced four and five at a time, plus three, plus three coming down uh, for the air weapons. Uh, sorry, plus three, plus two armor for air uh, with additional observers coming out to give those tempests the range they need. But Marcus looking in a really bad position right now. Absolutely. He does have that nuke made, but he doesn't have any any ghosts to deal with it and now oh as he's transferring scvs another run by of zealots and they're going to come in and clean up most of that so we do see uh the worker count dropping to 32 for marcus yeah there's just not a road back here delegation as those tempests are still lumbering and looming outside of marcus's base now down to only really one mining base here at the uh, sort of third-ish area outside of his natural, and uh, that's even not very saturated. <laughs> More Tempests and Observers now joining the fight to deal with these Widow Mines. Uh, they are going to get cleaned up before they get anything done. Oh, it does get a shot off. <laughs> yeah, what if it does get a shot off? Quite a large number of Widow Mines here, though. I mean, a uh, storm going down just in front of him. Now with those Observers there, he's able to see them, but... Man, if those Widow Mines could have got under those Tempests, that could have been interesting. And those Templar are taking some decent tank shots there. A couple of them do fall, but there's just so many Tempests here, it's hard to deal with any of this. Now it looks like all the Tempests are dead. Oh, no, I'm sorry. They did run to the north side of that uh, engagement, but so many Tempests here, the Viking count is just not able to deal with it. Well, the mines getting under the Tempest, but don't actually get much of a shot off, get stormed, and Nuke does go down. Is he going to land this Galligation question? Is Dizzy no? Hey, the new comes off. This could be absolutely insane if those Tempests don't get out of there right now. Galligation, is he going oh to do God. this? Where's the, the nuke is going to come down, and it's going to... Oh. oh! Wow, unfortunately, it doesn't actually kill the Tempest. Um, <laughs> but, you know, they might have some problems here in 10 They're or 20 years. <laughs> Hopefully they had their radiation suits on inside there, but unfortunately they're going to continue to fire on the base for now. Mines do get a few decent shots off there, but so many Tempests down so low in health here. And that Ghost is running low on energy, heroically continuing to launch attacks, uh, but how for how long can this go on? I mean, he's, Marcus is out of mining bases here. Yeah, I mean, as the observers here have noted, there's just no way out for Marcus. Uh, and but there it looks is. like uh, is going to be the end right there. But wow, if that wasn't an epic game delegation. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really glad that we got to see that nuke as ineffectual as it was. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so what would you say, uh, you know, it seemed for a while there that Marcus kind of had a decent advantage. You know, he had a, a great army there uh, and put a really heavy uh, offense kind of in the middle of that game. Where, what was the turning point for him? Uh, I mean, the tur I don't know. There were so many. I mean, uh, they the, the game started out with just trading uh, worker kills, to be quite honest. And uh, both players got some really epic harass off. I mean, Hushang got that nice zealot drop in there to kill quite a few SCVs in the main base. And that uh, four Widow Mine drop that took out 
both a good chunk of workers and a good chunk of Hu Shang's army was pretty epic as well. But, I mean, I think where Marcus got a bit of an advantage is that Hu Shang teched so fast into High Templar and then didn't really get off a really good attack. I mean, he did do a nice storm drop sort of later on, but that was after the fact. But if you're going to rush for that as fast as he did against Terran, you have to basically be ready to just go with it as soon as it's done. And, uh, you know, Hu Shang kind of fell behind at that point. And that's when uh, Marcus had his very large uh, mech army and started pushing. But he also pushed sort of slow, I think. And you can uh, refute this uh, in a moment if you like. But Marcus moved across the map fairly slow, and Hu Shang saw it. So, I mean, it does take quite a minute, quite a bit of time to get those Tempests up. But Marcus also didn't stop Hu Shang from expanding. So he had four bases at that point, all the gas in the world. He could make two rounds of Tempest, have six Tempest, kill the Thors, and then the tanks are just fodder. So that's obviously, um, in my opinion, where it turned back in the in the favor of Hushang. And then at that point, uh, you know, Terran doesn't have the ability of Zerg to just do these epic pickup and tech switches, so it was hard for him to recover after that. Yeah, and I think you said it before. Like that, That's just a really hard army to be able to deal with. I don't know exactly... Uh... You know, what you would even do as Terran, unless you just got a an army of ghosts and five nukes that you can drop all at the same time and somehow not have them be seen or killed. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think I agree with you that that was the turning point there when basically when those tanks were sieged up and he was in between, like, the fifth and second bases uh, doing a really good push there. And, frankly, he even had those... Uh, those point defense drones that were shutting down those the Tempest for a little bit. Um, and, but he just wasn't able to continue that push going, and Hugh Sang uh, was able to continue to hold with just, it seemed like bare bones, but those Tempest came mm -hmm. in at right just the right time, really ramped that up, and uh, was able to basically effectively destroy the Terran army that was barging down his gates, and at that point, uh, continued harassment continued to kind of nail nails into the coffin there. Yeah, quite honestly, I was like, oh my gosh, he's so dead. As those tanks and Thors and Vikings were moving across the map, and then all of a sudden Tempest. Uh, so, as you said, definitely epic timing on that. And without those Tempests right there, he would have had a really hard time dealing with that with the ground army that he had. But uh, a really awesome game number three out of Crossfire Gaming coming up to take a lead 2-1 to one in this clan war here. This is Pro League format, so each player each team randomly makes a roster and then they're sort of mashed together and they schedule their game so um with each match we will see two new players unless this goes to an ace match at which point players can uh replay so uh, it is going to be two to one in favor of crossfire gaming we're going to take a 30 second break here and come right on back with game number four <laughs> 